Hey guys, XR here. Welcome to Star Drive 2. Star Drive 2 is a new Space 4X um, game that just came out on Steam about a few days ago. It's not going for too expensive, so if, if you really enjoy this game uh, based on the Let's Play, you might want to check it out. Um, out of the all the 4X games, I've played almost all of, uh, all of them on Steam um, that have come out in the last few years. This and maybe Distant Worlds have been one of the better ones that I would say so far. This game is very, very similar to Master Orion 2. In fact, it's almost a direct clone with uh, a few upgrades and in some ways a few downgrades, I'll explain that. Uh, racial customization, you'll, when you see it, you'll see, oh my god, these are exactly the same options that you got from Master Orion 2, and that's perfectly fine. I, I, I really like that from the past, and I still like that now. Um, solar systems, when you go scouting, it's basically the same, you know, yellow plants have all the nice habitable plants. Uh, white solar systems have all the crappy planets, but they're ultra rich, so those are your, like, your production systems. Um, space combat, rare, is, is highly... Um, okay, ship design is highly customized, customizable, kind of like a Master Ryan 4, but you just you actually build your ship piece by piece. That's really cool. You got um, the size on your firing arcs, how much energy, how much power, how much engines you want to put on, etc. Uh, space combat's real time rather than the turn based strategy from Master Ryan 2. It's alright, I mean, I don't have any complaints with it. I, I enjoyed it. Sometimes it can be a little slow uh, because there's not a speed up option. That, that's kind of a downside to that. But, whatever, hopefully they patch that into the future. Um, planets, like, are for research, to get the buildings, it's basically exactly the same as Master Ryan. Uh, you pick the group you want, and then you pick one technology from the group, unless you get the creative racial trait, which lets you have all of them, which is... <laughs> which I found, even from the original game, was really OP, but in this game it costs like a, a ridiculous amount of racial points, so it's more balanced. Uh, my only main fault is uh, diplomacy could use a little bit of work. It is not enough options uh, to it right now. It, it's a very, it's pr pretty simple, but hopefully they upgrade that. And then ground combat, ground combat. Um, that's kind of where the AI falters. I actually um, like the AI in the in the regular space part of the game, and in terms of ship ship on ship fighting, um, the AI does a decent job. And most people, you know, when they play this game, they can play on easy, play on normal, and then, um, you know, for the hardcore people, they can play on brutal. So, there's a few people who want the difficulty level upped up even further. I mean, that's understandable, but uh, for what I've seen on the forums, the majority of people are are doing pretty well with the, with the difficulty settings. So that means the AI has a strong foundation, and, you know, any weaknesses will hopefully be patched up in the future. That, that's a big plus. Uh, the other uh, main downside that I was what I'd talk about was uh, ground combat. Uh, I, I was starting to talk about it. ground combat is a little bit um, could have been done a little better. The, the AI is kind of one dimensional, uh, but that's because ground combat is basically kind of one dimensional. Whoever has more HE, more soldiers, you just line them up, charge each other, drop a few um, shields, load a few med kits. It's not too much strategy, which is. Uh, somewhat of a disappointment in that, but hopefully that gets improved. Anyways, I'm gonna start a new campaign right now. So for this new campaign, I'm going to, um, these are all the races that I can pick, and because I'm a, I'm X-Round Bear, we're going to pick the Karathi Shokadit, and, um, I mean, that, that's pretty easy to see why I'm going to pick this race. It's actually kind of cool uh, when you look at the population between scientists, workers, and farmers, each race has a unique image for each of those three types of um, citizens and, and soldiers as well. I forgot to mention that. Oh, also spies. Okay, so there's like five classes right there. Um, these are the racial traits that we have. We have clumsy spies, so we do worse at, uh, on intelligence operations. And we are eco-friendly, which reduces our pollution. Uh, pollution's basically... Uh, for every so much production you make, you generate pollution, which is essentially wasted production. So. Um, by being eco-friendly, we have 25% less pollution, aka more um, work. That's pretty good. I'm actually not sure if industrious workers is better than eco-friendly. Um, someone's gonna do the math. I'm, I'm not so great at math, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, population growth, uh, nothing there. Same with farming and industry and science. Um, those basically just give bonuses to growth, uh, 
how much food you make, industry and science. Also, excess farming gets sold as food. I think excess production, um, you can uh, make trade goods, which is also um, more money. So, um, food actually has an additional benefit as well. Other science, you know, just more research. Money, that just determines how much, uh, obvious, how many uh, billions of credits you produce each turn or lose. Um, for us, we have quality engineers, so we get 25% bonus to ship hit points, and then ponderous space fighters, that's minus two to our uh, damage. We're actually going to change that, I'm going to uh, take away this negative, oops, I'm going to uh, first downgrade our ground HP, because I feel like having 20 extra HP onto your, um, onto your units isn't very useful, but I, I want to maintain, you know, kind of how my my race plays. So I don't want to just change everything. That would that wouldn't be very fun. So I'm just gonna remove this 20% ship weapon damage penalty and uh, take away 10 HP. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, religions just basically a few bonus features. Sacrificers uh, basically allows you to sacrifice your population. For 50 research points and 50 billions of credits. Actually, in the early game, that's really strong because there's some neutral plants that you can rush and just take over, and then you just start sacrificing them. It's kind of funny, but um, 50 research points in the early game is is a lot, especially since the tier one text I believe costs about like 80 research. The tier one two text costs 150, and and so on. Um, it'll definitely save you a lot of time. The money's good as well. Holy Land uh, makes your home world gain 20% extra approval. Approval determines um, how much production you make. If you have very low approval, you're not going to have much production, not much science, not much food. It's just a shit planet. Uh, spiritual races, um, actually, what is this dude? Gains them. Take a somewhat mythical, their magical thing makes them generally have or gain them. Plus, to approve on each of their colonies. Anyway, that's pretty nice, too. Uh, diplomacy basically determines. How much other races like you, and that determines how um, the ease of making new deals with them. Um, and then we'll go over the special abilities since this is our um, first episode. We can just show you, show all the new people the new abilities we, we can do. Uh, cybernetic makes your race um, not use food, but you have to use production to grow your people. Subterranean. Subterranean basically adds more population capacity based on the size of the planet and that's actually a really good upgrade but you also got to remember that um even if you have a lot of people you're gonna get a big overcrowding approval penalty so um i think in master riot 2 this one is a bit more op full this you your people only require half as much food aquatic uh aquatic races gain population approval and farming bonuses on ocean planets i mean that's that's a smaller bonus than subterranean first i prefer subterranean over it but whatever uh, fantastic traders. When you trade with other races, you get bonus money. That's pretty nice. Slavers. Um, I haven't actually used slavers yet, so I'm not exactly sure what this does. Uh, maybe we'll do that in a future Let's Play. Rich Planet. Rich Homeworld basically increases the amount of production you get on your uh, starting homeworld. That's pretty nice. But actually, usually I make my starting homeworld a food planet. Um, this is just good for you know, the very first few builds that you might make. Poor Hormor is obviously the opposite. Uh, one new thing about this game is resources. Some planets have natural resources, and we get four of them, you get a bonus. Uh, resource on this means you only need two of them to get a bonus. Logi Homeworld is a malice. Uh, basically, it's like your people are mal maladapted because um, they're normally residing on a planet that has very low gravitational forces, so on. Normal G and High G. Planets. They're basically being, you know, tied down by the weight and they have production penalties. A uh, high G homeworld basically means that all planets are okay, including high G worlds, and then they gain an additional 10 HP um, combat hit points based on that. So that's why I don't, I don't really want to stack professional military and um, high G homeworld. I could probably even take this off and give myself proficient space fighters, but we're going to be, um, we're going to play with the, um, Stick with the role play for a race and not change it too much. Creative means that we can take all the technologies from a branch. Uh, I tried to explain that earlier in the intro for the game. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll show you once again to the game. Yeah, similarities is for warlike, um, warlike races. Basically, every time you conquer a planet, you can steal a resource from 
um, the the person you conquered. Eh, that's all right. I mean, uh, trading is not too not too difficult in this game, so I, I don't think I need that. But anyways, we're gonna go to the Karathi uh, planet. We're going to put on System Hundred Huge because we are on an awesome game. Just random. I think I'm fine with that. Uh, galactic fertility. This is just determines how many. Um, habitable food producing plants that are. We'll just keep it on classic. I don't want to manage like a thousand uh, planets. So as I did that Master Ryan too, I just put out, like fertility or whatever the setting was onto Max and it just became a little bit too much. Richness, we're gonna make the game a little bit faster though by putting galactic ri richness to abundant. This just makes all planets uh, have a chance to have more minerals so they can produce more. Uh, the, Less richness you have, basically, it's a slower game. So if you want to compare it to, say, a game like um, Civ 5, this, this is basically the, the control you want to change if you want. A very fast game versus a very, very slow game. We don't, we don't want a slow game for a let's play. Hostile threats are just random NPC neutrals that run around. And they're kind of annoying, but... And they, and they block... They block... Exploration. I'll keep it on normal. I actually want them a little bit nerfed because I feel like uh, the player handles them better than the AI. But whatever, keep it on normal. And then we'll play a brutal difficulty. I played hard my first time and I had a good time. Uh, the first time I had to restart because I was just trying to figure out what the fuck I was doing. But the second time, you know, I, I basically was able to smash all the enemies. So we're playing on um, brutal and I'll play with seven AIs. I think eight is too crowded. Seven's already pretty crowded. And then go for go for red. I like red. What will we call ourselves? I don't really like Karathi Shogun then, to be honest, but I can't really think of many better names. So it's called the Teddy Bear Council because that's when all of the other races die to us. In the in their annals of their history, they're gonna write, "We got conquered by fucking teddy bears." So, race name, singular, Teddy Bear. Perfect. And now I'll keep my leader name, x 